Hey, handsome. What up, beautiful? How you doing, girl? I'm good. How are you? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm good. I love your haircut. You look sexy. Thank you. But let's get to these questions because we posted our testimony about our custody battle. And a lot of people like are intrigued by it. They're intrigued by it. I thank God because it was like a little, not embarrassing, but sometimes when you think about the things that you've been through in your life, it can be like a little bit like, man, I've been through that. Like it can be a little like, oh man. But if you look at it on a positive note, you can also say, wow, God did that. Like yeah, God, God brought us through. It was a kick. He kicked in the door. Right. Waved the Bible and blessed <laughs> us and said, come on, y'all are bugging. Right. There's too many other lives at stake for y'all to be acting right. like this. Yes, and I thank God for that. But before we even go further, I apologize because we didn't even introduce ourselves. Like, I am Sam Villa. And I'm Antoine. And we are the Henrys. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, what is going on? We, we are, are back. We are back. It's been a little minute. Right. It's been, been a little minute. We've been traveling, getting these kids ready for school, and so forth. All the good stuff. That's all good stuff, right? Yeah, it's always good when you got a partner. Amen. I don't know the rest of the handshake. You, got you forgot good? our handshake. Do we have one? We do. Ready? We can't be doing this. We can't do this one. Really. People are going to be like, whoa. True story, we got like a little cute handshake that he taught me, but he told me that it was a part of a game handshake. And I was like, what? He was like, so in public, we can't do our handshake because people are going to think that we're affiliated with the game. We are not in any games. At all. Why we're did you teach of Jesus. me that? I'm in the gang of Bi the Jesus. The gang of the Bible. The Bible. <laughs> but why did you teach me that? You taught me that literally 13 years ago. Okay. <laughs> So, you guys want to know how we broke through on our custody battle. <laughs> okay, so let's. it's going to get real. I appreciate the laugh because it's going to get real serious, y'all. In a few minutes. In a few minutes. So, um, you okay, I'll just open it up. What led us to this breakup, right? That was the last breakup that we had. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, but it was, it was an intense one, right? I was pregnant with our fourth child and which is our third child together but our fourth child and it was it was rocky our relationship was rocky it wasn't built on a solid foundation and as i'm telling you guys i'm really trying to be modest about the situation because we're not trying to really re relive those things relieve it, those feelings right we're not trying to relive those feelings again yeah well, I, I think that we never had a foundation i think that we just needed to we had to build on something that wasn't there we needed wow. to work on each other first before we can be able to help one another to grow. Right. And so at that point, we didn't have a foundation. No, we didn't have a foundation. Right. We just was making babies. And having fun, I That's, guess. Yeah. Um, our relationship was very toxic. It was very dysfunctional as a result of this lack of foundation. Therefore, when we were pregnant again, it was just like, okay, here we go again, right? So... At that point, I think that we were trying to like break the relationship up anyway, but then I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. So at that point, it, it didn't help the fact that I was pregnant. It didn't help the relationship. So we found ourselves broken up. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it was toxic. We weren't communicating. So then Antoine went back to court. Um, he went to go file, excuse me, a petition so that he can seek custody of our children. And that's kind of where it like, it started. It started to get real ugly. I don't know about you guys, but if you have ever been in any kind of custody yeah, battle, it's, it's not, not pretty. It's not, it's not the pleasant of things. <laughs> it's not pretty. Even going down to the office, even going to file a petition, even right. going to talk to the law, the, you know, your public defender or lawyer, whoever you go get, right. and the, to the clerk. It's so not fun. it's not fun at all. So needlessly to say, it was a lot of tension between Antoine and I because at that point, I kind of felt like we should have been able to communicate. Yeah, be able to just work it out so we could be able right. to move forward and be parents to our children at least. But we couldn't. I mean, the truth be told, we couldn't. I couldn't. I didn't know how to communicate without yelling and hollering and screaming. I didn't know how to articulate my feelings in such a way that didn't involve me cussing and fussing. Right. Um, I didn't know how to do those things, right? Yeah. I, I came from a very toxic background. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about your communication? 
I'm not receptive to the yelling and the cussing and stuff like that. So we needed a third party to get involved so we could be able to have that conversation so we could be able to see and be parents to our children. Yeah, but I kind of feel like even though you, because it to me, even though that was first nature to me, right? The cussing and fussing and stuff, I felt like you weren't open with communication. Like, so even though you weren't receptive to the cussing and fussing, mm -hmm. many people aren't. I'm not saying you shouldn't have been, but babe, you weren't open with the communication either. So what, what else, I'm trying to say like, how was your, like, what kind of communication would you have rathered? Or what, you know what I mean? Because you wasn't facilitating a communication. No, I wasn't facilitating it at all. Um, I think that after a while, it became uh, uh, like a, like repetitive. Like, you know that this is what's going to happen. You know that you're going to argue, you're going to fuss, you're going to do X, Y, and Z. So there's no reason for me to even have an open dialogue with you. So I might as well just go to the court and file a petition. Yeah, I did. I just think that honestly, I think that that that's where lies there. That's where it lies some of the issues that we had. Mm -hmm. Because for me, I wanted to talk. Like these are some of the things that we need to talk about. Mm -hmm. You thought that she's gonna just argue with me, fuss with me, cuss me out. I'm not gonna communicate. So you left me. I'm gonna be honest with no communication. Right. There was no lines of communication open, and I think that if it's safe to say, I don't know, but you you let me know. Like, did you not know how to communicate? Because to me, it wasn't. It didn't start off with just cussing and fussing. It mm -hmm. didn't start off with that. It started off with the fact that here's here's a situation mm -hmm. that we need to communicate, but there was no communication at all. So no, I didn't know how to communicate at all. I was, you know, I thought communication was. You know, we laugh and we're joking and keep it pushing. But it something else had it had to be stemmed after that. It had to be more to the communication. It can't just be laughing and joking. It has to be something else and it has to be come up with a goal. Okay, so how is your communication now? How is that now? We have to come with a resolution by the end of the communication if it's a disagreement or anything that we have, you know, different feelings towards or maybe something that has to do with the children. We have to have a ending not just a run on sentence okay mm -hmm. i appreciate you opening that up because i just want to like help someone who else is, is out there communication is just not coming up with a solution it's communication it's sometimes everything. is the dialogue right just having a letting someone vent and you know sometimes venting doesn't need an answer right sometimes venting is just oh, i need to have this conversation and right. i don't need you to talk about that right um it's also body language. Communication is body language. Communication is words of affirmation, right. and um, etc. There's yeah. so many other things that that communication can heal all wounds. Right. Mm. Um, I appreciate you saying that because we didn't have that at no. all. I mean, we didn't have not I, them early years. No, no not those early years. And, and I'm gonna be honest. Even mm -hmm. seven, mm -hmm. six years in is not too early. I mean, mm -hmm. that's six years. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, to me, I think that's very significant. Right. And I think that we didn't have that at that time. And mm -hmm. I think that that resulted to a lot of my frustration because I didn't have that communication with Antoine. You had one party. So you cannot have a dialogue if only one person is willing to communicate. Correct. And that that was our downfall. Mm -hmm. That was one of our downfalls. Maybe one of the most significant downfalls that we had. It's communication. It was communication. Because that's one of the things that's helping our marriage now. Right. We mm -hmm. communicate. We talk about everything, right? Have conversation. All the time, <laughs> all the time, right. right? And I think that is necessary. I don't think that over communication is ever a bad thing. No. No. Mm -hmm. We talk about everything. And I still think that there's probably some things that we don't talk about. Well, not just that we don't talk about a thing. It's just like trying to get to understanding that it's always revolving. It's right. Always, it's, like, it's like a cell phone, it's the internet. A computer, you know, it's always going in. So it's right. always something new coming out. Updating it. Right. <laughs> right. Upgrade. Right. Yeah. Right. So at that point, that's what led us to the custody battle. That's what led us back, you know, into the court system to begin with. Um, there, Antoine had an attorney. I had an attorney. We spent thousands of dollars. Um, of course, I spent more money on my attorney than Antoine did. And my attorney did nothing for me. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's beyond the point. We found ourselves eight months down the line and said what? We need to come up with a, a, 
we didn't come up with a resolution so we could be able to move forward, be the best parents we can be. Right. So even if you still, you know, you get a custody order or this, that, and the third, it's, if it's no communication or no understanding, it still could be the worst thing ever. So right. we had a conversation and we talked about uh, working our parenting up and trying to move forward with our parenting first before anything. Right. And once we came to that understanding, um, we knew that at first we, I knew that a relationship, I did not want a relationship. Um, I think that during that custody battle, just for me, and I'll talk about my feelings and just being transparent, I was very broken from that custody battle. I felt like if Antoine loved me, he would have never um, initiated some of the things that we were going through. I do understand that I was an active participant in all of those things, but I do feel like Wow, like if a person that says they love you, they, they won't hurt you emotionally like I was hurting. So at that point, after the custody battle or towards the end of it, I knew that, hey, this relationship is not for me. And I'm okay with that. I think I was really with the understanding that I'm okay with this. I'm okay with this being parents. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I think that you wanted a little bit more than that. Well, I wanted to work on a relationship. You know, we're doing it for the kids, you know, as parents. But after a while, you know, I wanted to see if this thing that we had could move further than what it was or it can be healed. Right. And so at that moment, we went into it with the understanding, like... We are friends first. Let's be friends because I don't think that we were ever friends. I don't, I don't, I don't think that we were no, ever we friends. Was, we went out of town our first date. So, <laughs> so we, yeah. went, we went on the road our first date, so... We it wasn't. I think we just jumped in too fast and not knew any, knew anything about one another. We right. had speculations by like you know maybe I'll see your parent, you'll see my parents, or where I came from, where you came from, and stuff like that, but not knowing the ins and outs of what I went through or what you went through. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. And so, do you think that having a relationship or having a friendship would have been like beneficial in the beginning? Yes. Why so? Because you understand who you're with. Okay. You're, building, you're building something. Instead of you, when you jump into a relationship, you didn't build anything. Okay. You just jumped in, like you just started building wind, windows with no wall. Right. You build a house with no foundation, with no blocks, right. and like so. You so once it hits the dirt, it's gonna it's gonna die anyway. It's gonna right. it's quicksand. Right. So if you build a foundation where there's friendship, and then you grow to the next level, you know, then it, it can it can be a solid house, a solid foundation. Right. Mm -hmm. I agree. So I think that I was just asking just to hear you say it, but I definitely think that being friends is very beneficial in, in, in any relationship. And unfortunately, Antoine did not and I didn't have that at first. But once we got back into it, we realized like, hey, this is necessary. Let's become friends. And we did that. We started like talking more. Communication was open. We started learning how to talk and how to hear each other, right? Because I realized that sometimes when we're communicating, sometimes the other person on the receiving end is not actively listening. That person is, is just waiting to answer. Right. I'm just waiting for my turn. And we used to be like that. Mm -hmm. And it's to the point where if you're just waiting to talk, then y'all yeah. just having like a, like a debate. You didn't hear anything I said. You didn't hear anything. And so we had to learn how to actively listen to one another. But but I think at that time, when you're friends, it's no judgment then. It's no like insecurities then or like a regret that I said this, even though it's not nasty, but I don't have a regret saying like you hurt me. Mm. So, you know, sometimes when you're in a relationship, you'll get a, you'll get a regret. Like I said, like I don't want the backlash of what you think about me. Wow. So when you're friends, you don't have that. It's, it's like the honeymoon stage. Right. So I, I definitely agree with what you said. I definitely think that having that um, that insecurity broken, like having the security of knowing that I can say anything to you and you're not going to be offensive about it, defensive about it. You're not going to judge me for my truth and my transparency. I think that makes a lot of the communication flow better. But even, but even let's, let's make it a good thing. But you can be who you are. When you're, when you're with your friends, you can be whoever that person is, whoever Sam B is, whoever Antoine is. So that funny, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm a little underneath the weather. That funny person or that person that likes plan, uh, plan, planning or that person that, that's organized comes out. 
So you don't have to shy away from that. You don't have to, like, usually when you go on a date, you're trying to be somebody you ain't. Right, right, so, right, right. so you're trying to be this this cool dude, this fly dude, or whoever you're supposed to be, right. but you could be whoever you are when you're friends. Right, I love that, and, and that's true because I think in the beginning of our relationship, you you put up um, masks. Like when you're in the beginning of a relationship, you don't want them to see your deep truth. You don't want them to see your scars and your bruises, so you kind of cover that up, right? Mm -hmm. We cover that up with makeup and everything of that nature. But what you're trying to say, if I'm understanding, it, is like. When we were friends at the beginning, like when we started recreating this, we can lay aside the mask, take the mask off and just be you. Yeah, you already know my dirty laundry now anyway. Right, so, right. So if you want to tell me a joke, tell me a joke. And right. don't have to sugarcoat the joke. You know? Right. So I think that is very important. And that's what we did in the beginning. So, so uh, tip right now, if you're in a relationship, start becoming friends. Start understanding your partner. Start allowing your partner to express and be whoever they are because sometimes they got hidden talents that you don't know nothing about. Wow. They probably could paint. They probably could draw. Yeah. They probably could do something that could help your business or help you at work and you're not allowing them because of all the negative things that you guys went through. You know, wow. so, you know, try something different. That's my piece. Yeah. That's my tip. That's your tip. Write that down. <laughs> I, I definitely appreciate that because I think that if someone told us in those first six years, like, become friends, we could have built our foundation on that, becoming friends first, mm -hmm. right? Because if the relationship felt like it did, we could have had the friendship that would have kind of held us together. Probably, it could have mended. It could have mended back together. Right. So I definitely agree that that tip was beneficial. Thank mm -hmm. you for sharing that. Right. What else? What what is another thing that we do? What is something else we did? We did communication, but what else did we do? We communicated. What else? I think at that time we became a family. Okay, how so? Um, we we did travel and do things with the kids. Yeah. But I think at the time when we traveled during that time, and we did things with the kids, I think we dated and became an item without knowing. We became family without knowing. Because it was no insecurities of how you should treat your children or how you should treat, how, how do you do things. It was more of a suggestion. It was more helping. It wasn't like, oh, I'm gonna I'm I'm deal with Antoine this way and you can deal with Antoine that way. You know, because they came to my house and then they came to you, your house when we were together. I think more, I was more coming over more. We went on trips, we went, we did things on the weekend. When I wasn't at work, I was there. So, right. so I think it was more of a family thing. When I wasn't, when I wasn't at work, when we was in a relationship, I was somewhere drinking. Right. And, you right. know, I did. I, I think at that time it's crazy because at that time I think I drank the less, and right. then I wind up getting in trouble. Getting in trouble. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I agree with what you were saying. So before in our relationship. We, when we were co-parenting, like Antoine just said, you would be off of work and Antoine would be out with his friends. He would be out doing Antoine's business instead of doing stuff with our family. And that was one of the things I really yearned for. Like, I really, really wanted that. And I just didn't have that family unit. Even though we had children together, even though we were quote unquote together, we didn't have that family unit because we weren't doing things together. Unless it was a special event, like, okay, we went apple picking that one time mm -hmm. in September. No. But we started doing things every weekend together. We were always doing things we together with our children. We was cooking on the grill. We was going to parks beaches. And we stuff. went to the parks. We went to different cities. Lake George, we did. Yeah, we went to, um, yeah. you know, we started, you know, tucking the kids in together. And we started, you know. Going back to church together. Yeah, we did that. And then um, we started kissing. <laughs> but it was it was funny because I remember when Antoine when we started going back this is a very significant thing I was abstinent I was practicing abstinence and I was just like nope. so no I this is something that I really felt like I'm like I did it my way I'm giving my body back to Christ you know and I was just like and I'm going to wait until God blesses me with a husband and I I kind of told that to you how did you feel when I told you that because obviously we had three biological children together at that point. Like we were together, like we were going back and forth at that point for six years. So. I, was, I was in my head was like, I'm gonna be the one, I have to wait. If I'm coming over there every day, <laughs> ain't nobody else coming over there when I was coming over. Right. So if I had to wait, so then I guess I was gonna be the one that's waiting. And I wait, I waited. 
That was amazing. I didn't know that. I mean, I kind of was embarrassed to like tell you that, but I kind of had to, I felt like it was a test. I had to be honest. And I was just like, no, like I'm, I'm literally practicing abstinence. And I know Antoine, we had history together. I know we had these children together and I know we're working on it, but I am not going past the kissing stage. Like this is, that's it, you know? And like you said, you had the way he did wait. Um, and I want to say like a couple months later, we were talking about marriage. Do you want to talk about how that came apart? apart about? Um, no, because it's a significant part in it. Right, okay. It's big. Okay. So, so that'll be for the next video. We'll talk because three months later, we were engaged. So from that time, from that, we were like, hey, let's, let's start this. Let's try to do this. Three months later, we were engaged from that moment. Right, and that was... And it was significant. So that we're going to share that in part two of this. Right. We'll save it for part two. See you guys later. All right. <laughs> so, but thank you so much for coming. Tune in. Here. Tune it in, guys. Thank you for your questions. Someone had asked us to go into more detail. That's the reason why we came up with this video. So I appreciate you guys asking. Make sure you guys comment below. Um, ask some more questions. We are willing and to, to just share it with you guys as we are led. So this is the season. For y'all to ask questions. Right. We have, okay. We have the time to give y'all what you are waiting for, what you think, or I mean, what you want to know. So. All right. But before we go, make sure you guys press that thumbs up button, so, like this video. Subscribe, tell a friend. Yes. Have movie night with our content. <laughs> <laughs> and enjoy us. We thank you guys again for being part of our family and peace, peace. out.